Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, today, we're going to be talking about the event that's going to be coming later on today. Well, tomorrow, I guess, depending on time zones and certain other things. But we're going to be talking about the Water Monster Crisis, which should be happening right as Battle in New York ends, which is going to be today on the 28th, when you will hopefully be hearing this video. And then we'll go into maintenance, and then the actual event, which is Water Monster Crisis, will start on the 29th when the maintenance ends. So let's go right into it. Okay, but some other things to mention, just because I'm not going to have time to actually talk about them. There's also going to be a survey related to this for the Freight Grand Order user survey. Make sure to fill it out and receive four tickets. It's very important that you actually legitimately fill out these surveys and be very concise. I might actually do a video going through the survey and talking about it. The reason is, is that I actually do kind of work in stuff related to surveys, and I think people don't understand how important surveys are <laughs> unless you specifically have seen some things in the background and know how important and how important it is to choose your words carefully and be very concise with what you want, but I'll wait until it actually comes out. I can't remember if you actually have to write this down. Maybe it's just a simple question and answer, but you know what? We'll see. I'll do the actual survey when it comes out. And there's also going to be a new master support campaign coming as well, which is going to be related to spring. Uh, all you need to do is nothing. Just make sure the social media posts get to this, and you'll be able to get easy five tickets. Five sync wards, three sync wards, two, uh, eleven. I have, yes, eleven. And this will last until the campaign period will be here until the 14th, and then we'll actually get the stuff on the 19th, so remember that. Uh, we'll be getting some more friend slot. There will be a limited time campaign. Uh, related to this and then obviously start dash upgrades and then limited time master missions which is just get a bunch of friends or reach mash to the higher levels or ascensions and then just basically clear until Oke Okeanus which isn't that hard uh, and you'll get all of these rewards it's very simple stuff and if you've already completed it you just get it so that's just some stuff to talk about that is happening before sea monster crisis but there you go sea monster crisis uh, thankfully, we knew about this coming ahead of time. They did say it was going to be sometime in late March, and I would have assumed early April, but then people pointed out to me that um, I would have assumed so many stuff. That's why we got some stuff a little bit earlier than other. Yeah, there we go. That's the way I want to go. So, let's go straight and look in, into Water Monster Crisis. Sea Monster Crisis. I forgot that... Uh, uh, this doesn't have anything in it. It's funny because someone brought up to me one time in one of the comments, how come you changed the name of the title? You said it was going to change. I'm like, well, sometimes it changes. <laughs> There's nothing I can say. They call it Water Monster Crisis, and originally it was called Sea Monster Crisis. That's why I'm like, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it changes. Sometimes it doesn't. Floating Island of the Innocents, and this is called the Floating Island of Innocence. So that's that's correct. Anyway, to actually do it, you need to have cleared Gotar de Mayang. Um, to participate, but it's recommended that you actually clear Avalon Le Fay. So there, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not sure if there's gonna be any Avalon Le Fay spoilers in the things I'm gonna see, but you know, it's to be recommended. If you're gonna do the event and you've already cleared Lost Belt 2, um, but you have not obviously cleared Lost Belt 6, what you can do is skip all the story and save it for later. It would probably be my suggestion for it. So let's go into this other menu right here. So yeah, it will contain spoilers for Avalon Le Fay. So same main info, some stuff is going down. This is the way it's, the schedule is going to kind of look like. Obviously the dates are all different because like I said in Japan it was in April, but for ours it's going to start on um, the 29th. So we'll start with the main quest, Act 4, production quest will be open, a prologue, and then the next day main quest, Act 5 through 6 will be open. Some production quests and a free quest, and then it will be Act 7, Act 8 through 9, Act 10 through 11, and then Act 12, and then Act 13 for 14, and then Act 15 to Epilogue, and then it will be over until April 3rd. It will be at, not, it won't end on April 13th, but you get what I'm saying. It will basically be a week later uh, from when it started. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, basically a week. Uh, there'll be a new servant, which is the SR servant, uh, Taisu Zingyun, who is an alter ego. Uh, and then there'll also be a new limited servant, which is the Trung Sisters, who is going to be the, the, one of the units that are going to be on the, the banner to start with. This will be the map, uh, how it looks like right there. So, event mechanics, let's take a look. Uh, I should always mention, I don't usually know what these event mechanics are, just because I usually like saving them, so if there's anything brand new to it, 
I'll find out at the same time as you. <laughs> so, but based off of this being production, it's probably very similar to Summer. So you exchange uh, the Summer one. You exchange event currencies, Magical Saplings, Ominent Rock, and Sacred Mystery Ivy for various Ascension items on Command Codes. Uh, equip uh, the Star Holiday will increase the Energetic Con. Vietnamese Cheerful Con, Vietnamese and Shining Con, Vietnamese Drops. Con to Vietnamese means one child, child, uh, child, children, offspring. Two indicates words for the animal and female, not to be confused with con English. What? Um, Goddess of the Netherrealm will drop this, which is the Magical Sapling. The Eye of the Tiger will drop the Ominent Rock. And the World Excursion will drop Sacred Mystery Ivy. Let's clear free quests and rescue the con, the Vietnamese. <laughs> I wonder if this is actually what's going to be called. Clear production quest with their help. Once a production quest has been confirmed, the other production quest will disappear. Clear production quest to advance the main story. After clearing the epilogue, you can reset the production quest and choose another option. As you progress the island at the Con, Vietnamese will transform how they develop on is on your choice. Let's work together with the Con, Vietnamese and solve resolve the singularity. So we'll be working with the Vietnamese and building stuff. Easy enough, easy to understand, let's go. In terms of event bonuses, obviously the Trong Sisters and the Taisu Zin Young will get a 100% damage bonus and a bond bonus of 50%. The other servants, which will be Arshkagel, Mysterious L Alter Ego, uh, Leonardo da Vinci Rider, Semi Ramis, Wu Zetan, uh, Morgan, and Melt. Will get 50% attack damage and then 20% to their bond, while Mash will get 50% attack up and 5% to all party members in terms of bond. Uh, Vietnamese drops. Obviously, the two main units here will get, uh, they will drop all the Vietnamese for you. And if you want to drop a specific happy Vietnamese, uh, looking like a little bit like shocked Vietnamese and extremely happy to see you Vietnamese, or the shining con Vietnamese, the cheerful Vietnamese, or the energetic Vietnamese. <laughs> Uh, for the cheerful, you'll need Lancer, Rider, Berserker, uh, Moon Cancer, and Foreigner. For the cheerful, it's Archer, Caster, uh, Shielder, Ruler, and Alter Ego. And for the Shining, it is Saber, Assassin, Avenger, and Pretender. So just having them in your party will help give the drop rate of it. Uh, event CEs and CCs, the Star Holiday. This will give an increase to all of the three Vietnamese that you see down below. And then there will also be Event Ward Command Codes, Empress of the Hanging Guardians, Tale of the Rain and Stars, and Tanchan. Empress of the Hanging Guardians, when attacking with the engraved card, increase MP damage by 10% for one turn and gain two crit stars. Tale of the Rain and Stars, increase the engraved card's MP gain by 5% and star absorption by 50%. And Tanchan, when attacking with the engraved card, remove one crit rate up and one critical damage up from the target. Uh, summoning campaign, I'll talk about that a little bit later. In terms of the event shop, you'll need a grand total of 920 of the energetic, 620 of the cheerful, and 620 of the shiny if you want to get absolutely everything from the shop. The main ascension proofs for her, which is the proof of number one fan, you'll need uh, uh, two of them are located with the energetic, one of them is with cheerful, and another one is with shining. Uh, and then there'll also be the servant coins here, which you can pick up here, and then some QP that you can also pick up there. In terms of the magical saplings, you'll need a grand total of 4,200 of the grand saplings if you want to get absolutely everything, which will feature two of the CE, uh, the Empress of the Hanging Gardens, the Crystallized Lore, a, a mirror, the, Hor the War Horse's Immature Horn. Um, the Ancient Bell and Tranquility, Golden Statues for Saber, Lancer, and Berserker, uh, two Golden Foes of both Attack and HP, a Arts Code Opener, and finally just a regular Code Remover, or the things you can get with the Magical Sampling. With the Rock, you can get one of the CE, the other of the Tale of the Rain and the Stars, the Crystallized Lore, Fruit of Longevity, the Feather, the, the Rock, which is called the Idrisil Seed, it looks like a rock to me, though. Silver of the Saber, Lancer, and Berserker pieces. One, uh, one Golden Foe. I think this one is maybe HP or Attack. I don't remember between them. Buster Code Opener. And then finally Code Remover. And you'll need 3,500. And then 4,450 if you want all of the ones with the Sacred Mystery Ivy. This will feature, again, the CE, the Tonchan, the Lore, 
the scales of fantasy, the stinger of certain death, the magical cerebral fluid, the golden foe of the other kind, uh, 20 of the silver foes both of attack and HP, 5 uh, EXP, 50 of them that can be exchanged, or 100 of the 4 EXP, or 100 of the 3 EXP, but if you were heavy grinding in the lotto, you likely don't need any more, <laughs> so you can easily skip that. Quick code opener, and a code remover. And yeah, there you go. In terms of production quests, just to look at them, you can see here, uh, clear this, get that. Um, this will get different materials of how it will look like. I don't know if the things that you actually get here will be any different, but that'd be a curious thing to know. Because like I said, I don't fully know. Uh, hmm. Free quests. Just the regular old free quests it looks like to me. Let me look to see the hardest drop one. Yep, this will be another one where it'll be one Lancer and then three Lancers and then another one Lancer, uh, which is common for these type of events nowadays where they want you to be able to take out the big one first and then three of the little ones and then another one of the big ones. There you go. The rest of them look like to be average three ones, so you should be able to drop them to grind them normally and stuff like that. Uh, and there will be a challenge quest. I won't go over the challenge quest because there's plenty of people who want to actually just do the challenge quest for themselves and stuff like that. But there you go. That's the basics of everything that's going to be in here. The production quests themselves, it would so soon is exactly like summer. I don't think any, there's any differences of what will get buffed for you. But as far as I can tell, it doesn't look like any of the specific things that the way you cultivate the island changes anything. If there was, they would have probably made a mention of it here somewhere. But feel free to tell me if you know anything like that. It looks like there isn't. It just says, like, you want to build this, you get this. And it just kind of changes the look of your island so that it can look a specific way and stuff like that. But hey, I'm, I'm glad to find out when I actually do it. So let's go into the banner. There are two banners, technically. But we're only going to be talking about one of them. Because the other one, I'll talk about later. But this one has Morgan on it. <laughs> so if you're waiting for Morgan, just wait a week. Uh, in terms of the summoning, oh, there will be strength things. Okay, Wu Zetan is getting a strengthening, which will increase party critical crit damage for three turns and then cre increases party's MP gauge by 10%. And then in the Da Vinci shop, you'll be able to get the Mister uh, Mysterious Alter Ego um, shades, the cool shades. It'll be free if you've cleared Seraph, but if you don't want to wait that long, you can give two. <laughs> Two of the rare mana prisms and then get them refunded whenever you finally clear Made Interlude Seraph. Okay, now to go into the summoning campaign. Trung Sisters! Mmm, Trung Sisters. Okay, Trung Sisters and Mysterious Alter Ego. Oh, and then the Years of the Craft Essences. So, Goddess of the Nether Realm, MP uh, up 4% uh, a turn, MP gain 10%, MP damage 10%. Eye of the Tiger, which is the four star, start starts stars plus ten, quick plus three percent damage, crit damage five percent, and then there's a World Excursion, which is HP regen plus fifty, and then quick uh, three percent up, and yeah, nothing too crazy from what I can tell from here. Let me look at God as of another room. Yeah, charges MP gauge every turn for four percent, and then gets to five percent. Yeah, nothing that is a way to go for it. Some nice art on here though. With Erish Goggle. Nice Erish Goggle art. You got my man over here in his summer outfit, even though he does not have a summer outfit. But yeah, let's look at Mysterious Alter Ego. Lamba. And, or also known as Melt Lancer. <laughs> she is two quicks, two arts, one buster. Her first skill is the Swan Lake A. Increases its own arts performance for five turns. Uh, and level 10, it's 20% up to her arts on a cooldown of 4. Her second skill is the Perfect Fluid B. Grants self-invincibility for one turn. Grants own buff removal resistance for one turn. And then a 500% chance to grant self the Waterside Battlefield buff for three turns. And 100% buff removal resistance on a cooldown of 6. And the third skill is Melt NVEX. Absorbs party MP gauge except for self. The amount of MP drain on the allies equals to the number of MP charged by the skill user. Increases own crit star absorption for one turn and then increases own attack for one turn. The absorption is 30% at level 10. The absor the, the MP absorption is 30% at level 10. The crit star absorption is 500% and the attack up is 50% on the cooldown of 5. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance B, Writing C, 
uh, Writing C, uh, Goddess as in C, Independent Action EX, and High Servant. Her third skill is an anti-caster attack damage aptitude. And her Noble Phantasm is the rank B plus blue summer paladin. That summer dew is like glass, rank B plus, anti-unit, hits three times. It is an uh, arts uh, Noble Phantasm. Removes all enemies' evasion buffs on the water side battlefield, activates first, and then deals damage that ignores defensive buffs to them. 450% MP damage at level 1, and if you get her to level 5, it's 750%. And then she gains some crit stars, which is, uh, crit stars are 20 and charge level 1. And if you get her all the way to the final charge, you get 40 stars from that. And that is Lamba, or Mysterious Heroine, uh, Mysterious Alter Ego. Or just Melt Lancer, whichever one you're, or Summer Melt is the easiest way of probably saying it. Summer Melt is really good. She is a fantastic AoE Lancer. It's probably the one that a lot of people use for the most part in the game. Uh, not to say that there's not other good, lan like, solid choices for AoE Lancers for arts. There are. It's just that not a lot of the other ones are Melt. <laughs> so Melt kind of has a bias in that people love Melt, and I don't really blame them for using her. But thankfully, they they made her pretty good. This third skill is very, very good. The ability to MP absorb can probably come in a little bit bad if you are specifically using it in like a challenge quest because at that point you're most likely using her with Castoria um, and you'll be lowering your Castorias by 30%. It would be, if you look at it in a farming kind of sense of way, that doesn't make sense. If you look at it in a farming way though, those Castorias, you don't typically use their NP even though they do give their attack up. The reason is, is that it actually takes a little bit extra time. <laughs> For their NPs to go off and then for them to like, use their Noble Phantasm. So you very rarely ever actually use a Noble Phantasm. But they are just constantly building up NP to for Melt to absorb. So that's very nice and very easy to do. And even if you're not with Castoria and you're running a full arts team with like Tamamo. It's not that hard for you to gain back the 30% NP you needed to absorb. Um, and yeah, attack up once by 50%. It's uh, pretty good for a one-time hit them in the face and then go on. And it's a cooldown of 5, so not not too bad. The ability to just give herself waterside battlefield is pretty good. Because a lot of the times, a lot of summer units run into the problem of they have a really good buffs whenever they're by the waterside battlefield. And then you never actually are any in, in any location with the waterside battlefield for it to matter. So it's actually very good for her to have the, the ability to just give it to herself, especially because when you do have it, you're able to remove evasion buffs. Obviously, when you're farming, it doesn't really come into play a lot of the times, but there are, on occasion, a lot of really weird challenge quest fights where, the, the, for whatever reason, or challenging boss fights where everyone will just have art, will just have uh, evasion on them. Or you're in a fight where just one of the servants is just constantly giving themselves evasion, and it's very useful to just be able to be like, nah, I don't want to deal with your mechanics so i'm just gonna remove it from you <laughs> it's that easy to do and even if they did have something like the increasing their defense you're able to just completely ignore it with this with this off of it so she's really good uh i really like her she's 100 focused on just doing attack stuff but she also has some invincibility um and she also can increase her own buff removal resistance which can make it very tough for her even though it's only for one turn it's still pretty nice it can save your buffs um, overall, just a very good summer unit, and one that plenty of people use. I would use more of her if I did not have other options for Lancer uh, AoEs for arts. I kind of run into the problem of occasionally she doesn't do enough attacks. Like, uh, the one thing that I'll say that can be kind of bad when you only have her at MP level 1 is that that 50% attack that she gets, that's the only real attack that she has on any of her skills. Uh, besides this one, which is just 20% to arts, which is, you know, not... Eh, it's, it's not the greatest. So there will be occasionally times where you're fighting a boss that is really powerful on the second wave, and maybe sometimes you just don't have enough to kill him. And that's only when you're at early NP level, though. Um, so something to kind of keep in mind. But at the same time, you can also combat that by just, like, make grailing her to, like, level 100 or giving her golden foes. Like, there's ways around it. <laughs> I just choose not to do it for mine because I usually save mine for other units, but doesn't mean others can't.
and there's not to say that there's other ways around it, but just something to kind of keep in mind if you're just looking for one where it's just like, I'm just getting her to level nine, uh, level 80 and calling it a day. You might need to do a little bit more if you only have one MP level. But anyway, that's Lamba. Next, the Trung Sisters. They are n limited, similar to uh, Summer Melt. Summer Melt is also a summer unit, so that's also kind of a pain to get them, so I would not blame anyone to kind of go crazy for it, especially if you are a big fan of Melt. But here are the Trung Sisters. Um, hopefully I am pronouncing that correctly, because I believe they are Vietnamese, and I'm not 100% sure I'm actually saying their name correctly. But I'm sure someone will tell me if I got it wrong. They are a Saber unit with a quick 2 arts 2 buster. First skill is a Charisma of the Rebellion B-, increases the party's attack for 3 turns, increases party's arts performance for 3 turns, 50% uh, attack and then 15% up to arts on a cooldown of 5. Their second skill is increased to arts performance and buster performance and then grant self buff on attack buff for 3 turns. Um, one for <laughs> increasing on buster performance by 10% for one turn when attacking with an arts card, and then another one for increasing the buster card when you attack with an uh, with an arts card. And this all lasts for three turns. The arts buff increase is 15%, and the buster up is 15%. And this is on a cooldown of four. Um, pretty pretty funny move. Exalted Queen Trung EX and grants uh, charges own MP gauge and then increases party's MP generation rate for three turns and increases party's critical attack resistance for three turns. The MP up is 30%, the MP rate up is 20%, and the crit chance resistance is 20% on the cooldown of six. The passive skills are Magic Resistance B, Writing B, and Divinity C. Their third skill is an anti-assassin attack damage aptitude. And then their Noble Phantasm is a rank B anti-army um, hits nine times, arts AOE, deals damage to one enemy, recovers party's HP by a thousand every turn for three turns, it deals 900% damage at level one, and if you get it all the way to MP level five, it's 1,500, and then their overcharge effect is an increase to arts and buster performance for three turns, and if you're at charge level one, it's 10%, if you get them all the way to the final charge level, is 30%, and that is the Trung Sisters. They are... A very weird looking unit. I'm not 100% sure how you're actually supposed to use them. Um, yeah, they seem to be kind of divided into wanting to use Arts and Buster. And I kind of like the idea of like, oh yeah, there's two units working together to do one thing. Um, that's pretty cool. The problem is, is that you can only have one Noble Phantasm type and that's Arts. See, that would mean if you were going to use them with a... Yeah, these kind of units are also very weird for me. Just because if you put them into the way of thinking that you would a normal, typical Fago unit, um, you would probably try and use them with Castoria and Tomomo... Uh, not Tom Yeah, Tomomo. Regular Tomomo. So you can take advantage of their Noble Phantasm and make them stronger. The thing is, is that they also have this ability here that actually kind of, they kind of work really funny in a way with Vich. The reason is, is that Sister's Bond has a pretty low cooldown. So you could actually use Vich's thing to give a minus two cooldown and you should be able to get this back and be able to use double of this buff at one point. How useful is that? I don't know, but if you were to use it, let's say on turn one, so you use this, you now get 15% and 15%. Use it again. Use both of them so that they get 100% increase. But you probably wouldn't do that right away. Now that I think about it. You probably have to stagger it just a little bit. Just to make it make more sense. The reason is, is that this third skill also having an MP charger. Would mean that you'd want to use them. And especially because they also give MP generation rate. And critical attack chance up. Um, yeah, critical attack resistance up. My bad. And then also this. Hmm. Very interesting, but then this skill also only increases arts performance at the same time, and it's on a cooldown of 5. So I don't know, it's a very weird unit, I don't know how good, it seems like one of those units that would be really fun to watch like a video on, or try and work a team around them just to make it work. I have never been able to really make one of these units who are like kind of dedicated to using two different card types to really work effectively. That isn't just like trying to buff the one that they have three cards for. So for example, because this one has two arts cards, two buster, but they technically have three arts cards because that's their noble phantasm type. I would obviously want to focus on the arts type, but then 
are there enough units that also kind of buff that? It's very interesting. Again, it's one of those units where it's like, I think there's ways to make them work and make it uh, make it work and be fun with it. At the same time, they're also a kind of support unit. So not only does this in, uh, affect them, it affects all the party. So you can also kind of use them in that kind of way. I kind of wish that this also charged everyone's MP gauge. If this was a 20% MP gauger for everyone, I think that would actually make them super interesting to use. Because not only would they be giving 20% NP, they'd also be giving NP rate and then crit, crit trance resistance. Which obviously, again, it's a single target unit, so therefore you are never going to use them in. But, but funny enough, you would be using them, sometimes you would be using single target units in farming. Because like I said, the the one of the nodes in here, you 100% are going to need to farm using a single target um saber if you actually want to kind of get it done unless you're using like an extremely strong single turn yeah hmm hmm interesting unit is what i'll say i don't know if that translates into them being good but i kind of like what they're kind of going for very heavy support unit while also just being a damage dealing unit in themselves so they're the kind of support that if for whatever reason the unit that you were trying to buff goes down then it's like, well, that's great. Well, now I have an actual unit that can also just attack, and that would be good. Like, I'm trying to think of a specific scenarios where it's just like, yeah. And these are all things that you would use during, like, a challenge quest or during an exhibition fight. Those are the type of things that you would kind of use them in. Or in the the case for later fights where it's just like, yeah, 1v1, the grill front war, stuff like that, so... Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not going to be going for them. I do like that their art is done by um, the same person who does the Pokemon art. So they actually have an art style that I really like. And I actually like a lot of the art style that they got going on here. But I just don't know if I'm going to be able to actually go justify going for them. Which is a shame because I think they look really cool. Mmm... Yeah, I'm just gonna have to. I'm just gonna have to pass them on on this one, unfortunately. I think. Yeah, just things are getting too crazy uh, with so much stuff coming out pretty soon. Bunyan comes at the end of April, so I have to kind of keep holding on and save for Bunyan. And for other people, obviously, you have to factor in whether you'd want Morgan or maybe even after the Scotty and Gilgamesh banners that just came out. Do you even have anything to kind of spare? It's a little bit hard to know. So. Yeah, I'm going to end up skipping them, because uh, I have to. It's a shame that they're put into a really weird um, time frame right now, in between stuff that I would really care about. If they were just a little bit earlier, I think I probably would have gone for them. Shame. But yeah, that, that's uh, Sea Monster Crisis. I'll talk about the Morgan Banner at a later date, like I said, when it comes closer to her being released. Um, but if you know enough about Morgan, you know that Morgan's good, and therefore you'll go for Morgan. <laughs> Um, yeah, Sea Monster Crisis, that's going to come up, and then some other stuff will be coming up in the month of April, which is going to be the Learning with Manga collab. This was at end of April, but because we're getting this a little bit early, that makes me feel like we're probably going to get this a little bit earlier. And chances are they've already put out the... Actually, was this featured in the... Hmm, let me check real quick. As I look to... Oh no, I'm in the middle of a fight. No... Uh, pause. One moment. Okay, looking at the, um, the roadmap for 2024, the next thing that they show after Water Monster Crisis is actually the, um, the Eight Dog Chronicles, which isn't until early June. So that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Maybe they're going to reveal it pretty soon in the next... I assume that they're going to do another one of these, but now that I think about it, why would they make another of these until... Hmm. That's very weird. But you know what? Maybe they're just kind of playing it close to vest to see how long it takes or something. They don't want to give a firm, confirm date or whatever. But anyway, that's the end of this video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As always, thank you very much for watching until the end of the video. I'm going to get back into the swing of recording stuff. I was away for a very long time due to work, but now I have slightly less work, so therefore I can get back into the this groove of a go. We're getting pretty close to a time where I'm going to have to actually start um, worrying about summoning again. It's funny to think that I've done very little banner, done anything since 
January, maybe. It's been a very long time. <laughs> I actually can't remember the last time. It might have been somewhere, not even February. It might have been, yeah, literally, um, Bazette was the last time I tried for something, and then I failed spectac spectacularly. So, looking forward to doing more failed summons, and it's only going to get crazier from here on in. Like I said, we got Castoria coming up. We've got this coming up. We got so much, so much kind of coming up to, to worry about and summoning for. But yeah, and I'm gonna hopefully I'm gonna try and do some actual videos on C. It's gonna be very funny. <laughs> I think I'm probably gonna have to do some Sea Monster Crisis videos. I'm gonna try as um, this stuff kind of comes out. And I'm still going to be releasing old um, <laughs> videos from the Exhibition Quest. So look forward to the, the long time wait of that, I guess. But anyway, that's the end of the video. As always, if you want to show support, leave a like, comment. It does help a whole bunch. Subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next Fago video. You guys take care. See you later. Peace. Bye.